Picking up where we left off in the last section, we have a simple calculator that takes a price and formats it and shows a tax and a total. So let's add some checkboxes that gives the user some options. The Add Tax button allows the user to say whether they want to have us add the tax, and the Show Total button allows the user to decide whether they want to see the total or not. Not the best UX design ever, but that's not really the point. The point is to see how we reference a variety of different input mechanisms. So let's refresh the page. And we note that all of the checkboxes are off by default. Let's turn on Add Tax by default. Refresh the page, and yep, that's on. That's really nice, actually, that just setting a value to true, and bang, it's on. Really nice. But of course, that doesn't do anything, so let's change that. Here I'm using the question mark or ternary operator to say that if the tax is on, then the tax value is the cost times 15%, and if it's false, then it's just zero. You could spell it out with an if and an else conditional, but I think it's the equation's so simple that it really it's just cleaner this way. And uh, we can refresh the page, and we'll see change the tax. It's still not changing, so let's add a change handler. And refresh the page. Cool. Now that works very well. Now we could also do this instead. And use the expression of the cost plus the tax boolean. But what does that really mean? To find out, we can add this expression to the template and then refresh the browser. Notice how the add tax checkbox being on adds 1 to the value. If it's false, then 0 is added. That's because of how JavaScript handles adding a boolean to a number. If it were me, I'd probably just go with two watch methods because it's cleaner about my intention and it would probably be easier to maintain. Regardless, let's get that out of there. Now, there was another checkbox about totaling the bill. Let's add some template code. The ng show directive here shows or hides the tag and its contents depending on the state of the boolean. So if we refresh the page, we can see that by clicking on the checkbox that either shows or hides the total area. But in all honesty, while that works, you're not learning a lot, so let's implement that ourselves so that we can learn a little bit more about the Angular templates. Let's start in the controller. And here we're setting a new scope variable called bill underscore display to either block or none, depending on the state of the flag. And we can go back to the template. And set the style to that value. This is basically what ng show is doing for you. So let's try that out. And here we're setting a new scope variable called bill underscore display to either block or none, depending on the state of the flag. So let's go back to the template. And set the display style to that value. So this is basically doing what ng show does for you. Let's go over to the page. Show and hide the total, and that works. Excellent. Okay, let's add a button to see how that works. So in this case, what I want to do is keep a running tally of the purchases. So this add button will add the current value to a running total that we'll call the final bill. So let's go back up to the controller. Now this is a click handler. The add function in the scope is called by the button whenever it's clicked because of the ng click directive. To display the final bill, we'll need just a little bit more template code.
And we can refresh the browser and have a I'll look at all this in action. Show the total. And now we'll add it. Add a new value. And we'll add that. And we get a high running total and so on. And that's really cool. Okay, so there are two things I want to show, select boxes and radio buttons. So let's add some shipping options to the controller. And as you can see, this is an array of shipping options along with their cost. And the currently selected shipping option, which is called shipping, is set to the first value in the shipping options. So the next thing we need to do is add a select box to the template to show the current shipping option and allow the user to select a new one. And what you see here is the familiar ng model to connect it to a scope variable, in this case shipping, and a new directive called ng options that tells Angular how to set up the options in the select. In this case, we're saying that we want to take the name for every item in shipping options. Now, if we go over to the browser and refresh, we should see the select, and it's got all the shipping options. Very cool. But it doesn't do anything yet, so let's add a small change. So this just adds the shipping amount to the total. Let's go over to the page now and see this work. Refresh and show the total. Express. OK. Nothing's happening. Well, I think I see what's happening. So we still have to do a watch because that value is changing, but we're not refreshing the update yet. So let's go do that. And we'll refresh the page, show the total, and yep, awesome. We're adding the shipping value to the total value. Excellent. So what if we want to do this with radio buttons? How would we change around the UI? Okay, so I've taken out the select, and now I want to go and make a change to the controller. So in this case, it's just going to be a simple value for the total cost, because it's going to get the amount from the radio button itself, and then just apply that, and it's going to start off at 10. So let's refresh the page and see if this works. Cool, yes. We have a flat rate, express, super express. Let's see that they're added to the total. They are, but they're done in the wrong way. So we need to do the parse float thing that we did before. And let's refresh the page. And show the total. That looks right. But I'm not a fan. I really like the select and I like the objects. It was just right. So let's see if we can get there. Let's undo a couple of our changes. So first, we're now going to wrap the input in a label. So we wrapped the input in a label. We got rid of two other labels, and we turned the label into its own template and put it in an ng repeat system. So as Angular goes through the shipping options, it's going to set each one uh, to the value of s because of the ng repeat. So s in shipping options is going to iterate through shipping options and set e s to each one as it goes through, and then create an input for each type. So let's go over to this, put the br. inside. Now let's have a look. Ah, so we've created a value for each one to the total, and it changed properly. Sweet. So in this new version of the code, shipping options is an array that's going to drive 
the creation of each of the inputs. And I think that's a little bit more elegant than having the individual hard-coded elements and with the value. So we're still using options as an object, but we're getting the most out of it. Now, it's a little advanced based on where we are so far. In the next couple of sections, we'll go through this NGRP and show how that can be used more broadly. So in this segment, we looked at, let's see, four different new types of controls. Checkboxes, buttons, select boxes, and radio buttons. And we've seen how to integrate all those together within an Angular application through the use of the controller. So at this point, you should be pretty excited about just how easy it is to make a reasonably complex application in dynamic HTML using Angular. And to make one that's maintainable and easy to understand for both you and the other members of your team.